Kennedy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've gathered here this afternoon for what many would call the funeral services for Ty Rust. But with the liberty of all of you and the liberty of the Lord, a term I prefer to reference this time as would be a, a celebration of Ty's life. Life is a gift. And what we do with that gift can be a gift to all those around us. And as I look out among all of you, Ty is a gift. Some of you may say that he was a gift, but he, he is a gift because he still lives within each and every one of our hearts. The scriptures tell us in the book of James chapter 1 that every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from above. From the Father of lights, wherefore there's no variableness, there's no change. Time is a gift. The same passage of scripture in the book of James chapter 4 tells us that life's but a vapor. We're here today, and we may be gone tomorrow. And ladies and gentlemen, that's why it's so very important to make things right with one another and to make things right with the Lord with every opportunity possible. And with that being said, I'd like to begin with a word of prayer, if we could, please. Father, I come humbly but yet boldly before your throne of grace. And I ask for help and mercy in this time of need. Please be. Be with the family and friends of, of time. Lord, comfort them. You are the God of all comfort. Strengthen them, for your grace is sufficient. When we are weak, that's when you're strong. And Father, I pray you give us that peace that would surpass all understanding. And there are many things in this life that we don't understand. Father, please, I pray for all who are here today and those who weren't able to be here this afternoon. I ask you, Father, Comfort, encourage, and strengthen. And Lord, may your Holy Spirit minister to us as we gather together at this time to celebrate Ty's life. I pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Life is a gift. As I, as I got to know Ty through Marilyn, she shared so much uh, about Ty. I mean, we, we, we talked and, and uh, we texted and back and forth and... and um, I couldn't help but, uh, but think of a king, right? Uh, sorry, I think I say sergeant, right? But a king. There's a king in the Old Testament. His name was Solomon. And he wrote three books in the Bible. The first book is the book of Proverbs. And if you were to summarize the book of Proverbs, it would be words of wisdom. How many of you here today would say that you've received a few words of wisdom from Ty in your life? <laughs> or at least he thought they were wise. <laughs> The second book Solomon wrote was titled Song of Solomon. And if, if I were to give a summary of that book, it would be a love story. And I'm just looking at a portion of Ty's love story right here. The third book Solomon wrote, though, was titled The Book of Ecclesiastes. And he wrote it near the end of his life. And if I were to summarize the book of Ecclesiastes, sometimes I would call it just like, how do you make sense of it all? And ladies and gentlemen, if the wisest man to have ever lived and ever will live, Solomon, and he received all of his wisdom from the Lord, if he couldn't always make sense of it all, sometimes we're not going to be able to either. And that, and that can sometimes comfort us in days like today. But it was the book of Ecclesiastes, and in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, he said this, To everything there is a season, there is a time to every purpose under heaven. There's a time to be born. And for Ty, that was a Tuesday, July 16th, 1963, when the Lord chose to bring, to bring Ty into this world. Larry and Joan, or Larry's here today. Joan is, uh, is she here? she's not here with us today, and I'm going to keep her in your prayers. Um, she's not doing well. We'll comfort her in prayer. The Lord chose to use Larry and Joan to bring into this world a, 
a handsome baby boy and they knew Ty. Now, I can't imagine what their household was like while growing up. What do you think, guys? Really quiet? <laughs> his brothers are here. Troy and his wife Tanya and Tim and his wife Holly. My deepest condolences. I'm sorry for your loss. Truly. And then, um, and then Pizza Hut came along in Ty's life. And that's when he met Marilyn. And, uh, and management uh, classes and courses. See, 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 Ty went through management training and he called Marilyn and, and he had this um, he had this plan. He's like, I have these questions in management. I, have this, I just need to talk to you personally. He worked it, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and they met and they had lunch and one thing led to another and they've been married 34 years. My condolences, man. And they have Kyle. Kyle and Lauren, and uh, a man following his son, in his father's footsteps. Kyle, my, my condolences. And um, and Bryden, and grandson. Ty has left a legacy, not only in family but also in friends. And uh, it is an honor for me to speak on his behalf. Can't forget Oliver and Sadie. Those are the golden doodles. Oliver's. Since past, but it's been a hard year for Marilyn. Keep Marilyn in your prayers. Say you're still with us. I um, I would like to read uh, something his son did, Kyle, and uh, it's titled uh, "My Hero." It was a study, uh, a paper he wrote. Kyle, do you, did you know that I was reading this today? <laughs> I am, sir. <laughs> A hero is a man who does what he can. My idea of a hero is someone who keeps people safe and obeys the law. I also think that a hero does something good for another person or for their country. Heroes can be everyday people such as firemen or police officers. They're heroes because every day they risk their lives for the safety and well-being of others. In my opinion, Kyle's, it's important to have a hero because it gives you someone to look up to and respect. I also think that it's important to have a hero because if you don't, you can end up doing bad things and become corrupt. Another reason I think it's important to have a hero is so you have someone to look up to and admire. If you don't have somebody to admire, then you wouldn't have anybody to be like. So I, cho I chose my dad for my hero project. He fits my definition of a hero because he is a police officer. This fits my definition because every day he, pro he protects the lives of others by obeying the law and making sure that everybody is safe. He also fits my definition because he risks his life. He risks yeah, his, his life for the safety of others. I think my hero should be in the Hall of Fame, because he does a lot for his community. He works a lot so he can make sure that everyone is safe. Another reason I think he should be in the Hall of Fame is because he's a great role model. I also think my dad should, should be in the Hall of Fame because in addition to being a great role model, he's also an awesome fatherly figure. If there weren't no people like my dad, then the world I'm sorry, if there were more, if there were no people like my dad, then the world wouldn't be a safe place. And may I add, the world is a safer place because of your dad. And also because of the many, many other officers that are in this room right now, and the ones that are outside right now, and the ones that your father had an impact on. He is a hero. He is a hero. And we praise the Lord for him. But Ty... I had the opportunity, as I shared, to talk with Marin a little bit. Ty, known as LT, or Lieutenant, or Lieutenant Br Brust, or Dad, or Opa, right? His grandfather. He'd greet you with a handshake and a hello. I asked Marilyn, I said, do you have any favorite cliches, you know, one-liners? And she said, no. Well, sometimes that means he may not have or he did, but she just can't tell me. <laughs> if that makes sense, or I can't repeat them here. But I did pick up on a few. Like, 
These pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> it's an inside thing, okay? This is Ty Brust here, checking in. That's how he would leave a message to his wife. And she has a message on her phone. That says, this is Ty Brust here, just checking in. I'm sure she will keep that forever. His personality, well, he didn't know a stranger. He would talk to anyone. He was loving, caring, kind, and giving. He would help others, and very involved in the community, and very educated. And if he didn't know about something, he would, he would learn about it. He was proud of what he did, and he wanted to make a difference. And I commend him for his 31 years of serving in the Columbus Division of Police. I'm grateful. Some of his hobbies, well, I, I hear that he was quite the, uh, the griller. Steaks were his favorites, and then a smoker also, and liked to cook. But sports, he loved watching sports, playing sports when he was younger, and probably many, many memories of sports and uh, just time together. Enjoyed reading. History was some of his favorites, and the mysteries, and etc. His favorite music well, was just old rock. He just, that's who he was, 59 years young. And, uh, well, I asked Marilyn, what was his favorite TV show? She had to chuckle. I'm thinking, like, right, uh, I mean, just, like, law enforcement shows, like Blue Bloods, things like that. No, he's much deeper than that. Seinfeld <laughs> and The Office. And I've been told that Ty and Kyle could quote lines from The Office uh, and, uh, and Seinfeld and Enjoyed comedies from movies. How many of you realize that, especially in law enforcement, sometimes you need to take a break and just breathe and, and laugh? His favorite thing to eat? Any kind of pizza as long as you had ranch dressing. <laughs> um, an orange sherbet was his favorite dessert. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the little things. So you may be thinking, what does all this have to do with Ty? It's just because it's who he was when he went home. It's the little things. When he was at work, he was a uniform on, he was a sergeant or lieutenant, and, and he was a leader. But I want to encourage each of us, most of you here are familiar with law enforcement, but when those officers go home, they're allowed to have a life and eat pizza with ranch dressing, even if there's pineapple on it. Um... His favorite holiday, well, he wasn't much for the holidays. He just did whatever Marilyn told him to do. That's a good husband. <laughs> Submission. And um, Thanksgiving, no, just having family and friends to go together and a full spread of food. He did have one favorite that Marilyn wasn't a fan of, though. Oyster dressing. So um, if, you're, if you have nothing going on for Thanksgiving, just bring over a big pan of oyster dressing to Marilyn, and we should be grateful for it. <laughs> I'd like to share some scripture Marilyn shared with me. I, I asked her if there's any favorites. And, and she said that, that in, their, in their home they have hanging up from their wedding a passage that many of you are very familiar with. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That's, by the way, that's the love chapter. All right. Charity. Uh, in some versions it reads charity. And the word charity in the Bible in that, t in that context is a love that gives expecting nothing in return. And that's a godly love. Love is patient, is kind. Charity envieth not, it wanteth not, it doesn't, it doesn't boast, it's not prideful, it's not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly, nor seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked, it thinketh no evil. Rejoices in charity, love rejoices not in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, and hopes all things, and endures all things. And verse number eight, charity never fails. Ladies and gentlemen, love never fails. And I, I appreciate so much how Paul ended that chapter. And now abideth faith, hope, and love. And these three, but the greatest of these is love. And ladies and gentlemen, I think if Ty were here today, he would encourage each of us to have faith. Have faith in family. Have faith in friends. But as all of us know, there's times in our lives when, when individuals will let you down, but the Lord never fails. Have faith in God. 
You see, Ty sees eternity in a whole new perspective now. And he would encourage each of us to have faith in God. When we have faith in the Lord, it gives us hope. How many here would agree the world could use a little bit of hope today? When our faith is in the Lord, it gives us hope. And Solomon said, when hope is deferred, it makes the heart sick. When our hope is in the Lord, it's secure. And it's all based on that one word, Marilyn. Love. I believe Ty would encourage each, encourage each of us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And as Jesus said, love one another. For they will know that you are my disciples because of your love for one another. Those three words are so beautifully summarized in one verse. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. That's love. And whosoever believeth in Him, that's faith will never perish but have everlasting life. And that's the hope that we embrace today. It's not a hope so, it's a no so. When believing in the Lord and trusting in His love. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a, another passage of Scripture that I'd like to share with you. and Many of you have heard it many times before. And I, I just, I, I first time I heard it was 32 years ago when it was my brother that was there. And I sat there. And another man stood in this position. And it changed my life forever. There's not a day go by that I don't, I don't think about this passage of Scripture. It's written in the book of John, chapter 14. Many of you may be familiar with it. Jesus is the speaker, and he gathered his closest of friends and followers together. And he said this in John, chapter 14, verse number 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that we where I am, you may be also, and you'll know the way. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've been a Christian for many years now, and I've, met, I've never met a perfect Christian because there isn't one. And there's been many times I've wanted to ask the Lord a question. Today's one of those days. Why? 59 why? I don't know. <coughs> that day there was an individual there that day. His name was Thomas. Some of you know him as Doubting Thomas. And he said, Lord, we don't know where you're going and how do we know the way? And Jesus gives us one of the most powerful promises in the sixth verse of the 14th chapter of John when he said this. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it's not about religion. It's about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Trusting in the Lord with all your heart and all that He's done for us. And why did He do it? Because He loves us. Marilyn, I want to say this. On Friday, November 4th, the Lord didn't take time. The illnesses and the sicknesses of this world, maybe. But the Scriptures tell us that Jesus did receive Him. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am you may be also. And you'll know the way. You see, He will lead us. And prayerfully those words bring comfort. In the middle of that chapter, Jesus did say this. He said, I pray unto the Father. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I pray unto the Father that He will send you another comforter. Isn't it encouraging to know that the Lord is praying for you? He said, I'll send another comforter. That way... Um, He'll never leave you. He'll be right with you. Now the word comforter there in John chapter 14, is, it, it means this, someone to come alongside you in a time of need. And how many of you here would say there's a time in your life that Ty came alongside you right when you needed him most? You see, he's still there in your heart. And Jesus obviously is speaking of the Holy Spirit. And he's always there for you and he will comfort you and guide you and direct you and protect you. But, but there's a part of Ty that will never leave you, Kyle. will never leave you. He'll always be with you, Marilyn. Tim. And, Troy. And, then he, and then he said this, Peace I give unto you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, wouldn't it be amazing to see our world come to peace? He said, Peace I give unto you, not the peace of this world give I unto you, but my peace, let not your heart be troubled. If you love me, you would rejoice. For I go unto my Father, and my Father is greater than I. Rejoice. How many here today would say that you love Ty, Russ? And he would say, Rejoice. No more pain, no more suffering, no more sickness, no more sorrow. 
Ladies and gentlemen, through faith in Jesus Christ, we have the promise that old things are passed away, no more, no more pain, everything is perfect. God himself wipes away every tear. If Ty could be here today, I believe he would encourage us to have faith. Because when you have faith, it gives you hope. And wrap it all up in that love. The love of God and the love for one another. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a privilege for me to be a part of your family and friends today. And I've been praying for each of you. And I'm sorry for your loss. I'm grateful for Jeff Spence and the Spence Funeral Home for all they do for families in seasons such as this. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've gathered together today to express our gratitude to the Lord for sharing time with us these 59 years. The life that he lived, the lives that he has touched, the legacy that he has left, um, the life. As we close in prayer, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I would like to incorporate a prayer that many of you may be familiar with. It's titled The Lord's Prayer. If you are familiar with that prayer, I would encourage you to, to join along with me and we'll pray it together. And you'll know right when to join in. Before I close in prayer, I do want to encourage each of you, please stay in contact with, with Ty's family. I know the, the age that we're in with social media and so forth. And yeah, you got Facebook and so on and so forth. But nothing really ever replaces an old-fashioned phone call or a handwritten note saying, thinking of you and praying for you. May we close in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day as we gather together to thank you for this man. Thank you for sharing him with us these 59 years. We gather together with, with gratitude in our hearts coming into this Thanksgiving week. But Lord, there's also much grief in Ty's passing. So Lord, I pray, I pray, Father, please, would you comfort Ty's family and friends and give them that peace that surpasses all understanding and strengthen them, Father, please. I pray that you would grant unto each of us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change. Lord, I ask you to give us the courage to change the things that we can. And Lord, also, I pray that you give us the wisdom to know the difference. I pray, Father, all these things in the precious name of Jesus. And may we pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, as we close in prayer, I do pray. I ask you again to comfort Ty's family and his friends. May the peace of God be with each of us. And may the God of peace go with us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.
afternoon. I'm Jeff Simpson. I'm president of the Fraternal Order of Police, Capital City Lodge Number no. 9, the lodge that Brother Bruss was membership was a member of for many, many years. To my left is our members of my executive board, Jim Moran, financial secretary, Father Leo, Dewey Stokes, past president, and Brian Steele, executive vice president. It's good to gather here together. Let's remember Ty Bruss and we will start our FOP service. Brothers and sisters of the Fraternal Order of Police, we thank Brother Bruss and his family for this opportunity to pay our final respects. Brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection that knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives any sins we may have committed, we pray asking God to gather our brother Ty to himself. Let us pray. Lord our God, the death of our brother Ty recalls our human condition in the brevity of our lives on earth. But for those who believe in your love, death is not the end, nor does it destroy the bonds that you forge in our lives. We share the faith of your son's disciples and the hope of the children of God. We ask that you bring the light of Christ's resurrection to this time of testing and pain. As we pray for Ty and those who love him, we offer this prayer through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a reading from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like, we, uh, like wings on eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. The word of the Lord. Friends through our grief and tears, find comfort in the knowledge that today, Ty soars on, e on wings like an eagle with our Lord. And one day, we too will soar there and be united again with him and all those who have gone before us. We now will hear a reading from the book of Romans, from the 13th chapter of Romans. Listen with me to the word of our God. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror, for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from those who do right, but from those who do wrong? Do you want to be free from fear of the one of authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you, for he is God's servant to do you good. This is the word of our Lord. This reading from the book of Romans is speaking about those who are in authority, such as Ty and many of you in this room. This authority comes only from God and those of us who God calls to be servants, and we are here to do good. Police officers are called to their profession by the God Almighty to be good servants while they're here on this earth. Throughout Brother Ty's life, he was a man who, called, who God called to be a servant of good. Those of us in Ty's family of the Fraternal Order of Police have gathered here today to honor the good and faithful servant that Ty was and to thank our eternal Father for the gifts of his friendship and dedication to the service we have all been called into as police officers. A reading from the book of Psalms. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This Psalm of David is commonly referred to as the policeman psalm, and hopefully is a comfort. In these words we are reminded that whatever may happen to us during our tour of duty, God is walking along as our partner. The valleys that police officers walk today are many. They may be shadowed valleys in our personal life, or literally shadowed valleys of danger while on the job. Whatever they may be, be comforted in the fact, knowing in your heart and mind, that if you place your life in God's hands, there is no evil to fear in the valley. May the words of this psalm resonate within you and comfort you not only today, but always. As a symbol of the good that Ty did as he served God in this life, I will now present the family with a memorial Bible and a certificate. As president of the Fraternal Order of Police, Capital City Lodge Number 9, I direct our brother, Secretary Moran, to enroll the name of Brother Ty upon the list of brothers and sisters gone before that we may be ever looking forward to their welcome when our time comes to pass away. Brother Ty's name is written upon our memorial tablet and enscrolled within our hearts. And Ty's memory will be dear to us forevermore. Let us pray. Lord Christ, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief and to receive Ty into the arms of your mercy. You will honor the Holy One and you are mercy itself. And by dying, you unlock the gates of life for those who believe in you. Grant our brother Ty a place of happiness and peace in your kingdom of glory forever. We pray these things with the prayer you taught us to pray. As we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I knew Ty for a long time. I knew him in a professional capacity from work in union contracts. Going off a little script here a little bit. I, I truly believe the only thing you can really leave behind in this world is your character and the impact that you've had upon your friends and family. And Ty's work professionally will live on here in the Division of Police. His work professionally will live on for decades in the many, many union contracts that he helped negotiate on behalf of the membership, but that's who Ty was. Ty was a good man, he was loving, he was always upbeat, and he was a friend to all of us. And so although he's not here physically with us on this earth, he really truly will live in our hearts forevermore, and that's what matters through this time. That concludes our FOP service. Father Conley will now be taking the mic and say a few words. Thank you. My dear sisters and brothers, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ 
who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. We pray for our brother Tai that he may share in Christ's victory and we pray for ourselves that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith indeed professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Tai, who has fallen asleep, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. As we were getting, getting ready to begin the... Uh, FOP service, someone said about, it's like church. You have to get here early so you can get a seat in the back. So, because look at all these empty seats up front. Um, and of course, being a police officer, Ty would appreciate that because he didn't want anyone be behind his back as police officers usually do. They sit before and next to the wall or whatever. I did not know Ty. I've seen him a couple times, but I did not know him. But I'm assuming that it's safe to uh, assert, given all who have come here to honor him and to remember him today, um, that he was a great servant. He was a servant to the people of, of Columbus, a servant to his family, a servant and to those who were strangers, those he didn't know. He accepted one of the greatest vocations and calls, which is to serve the people of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. And blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. Ty accepted that call to be a peacemaker. He stood for what was just and right. I'm sure that um, indeed he paid a heavy price for that in many ways. Police officers are not necessarily um, the favorite of many people, especially in the times in which we live. And I think it's fair to say that in his vocation as um, a police officer, he's been insulted before as well, and have had all sorts of people utter every kind of evil against him, and yet, Somehow, in some way, he remained steadfast in that call to public service. Indeed, 
in doing so, we believe that, as we have heard in the readings, that he has a special place with the Lord and all of his loved ones and friends who may have gone before him. I read in the obituary how he liked sports and one of, uh, one of the sports that was mentioned was golf. Did he golf himself or did he just watch it? He tried to golf. Okay. Now, don't take this the wrong way. But I always thought, I, every time I think of golfers, they're a little bit strange, okay? I mean, you know, they'll get up at some ungodly hour in the morning when God's not even up yet to get a tea time um, on, on the course or whatever. And then they actually expect to take a club and hit a little ball into a hole in one shot. Now, what are the odds of doing that? But they're fanatical about it. They keep on doing it over and over and over again. And of course, now don't get me wrong, I mean, everybody has their thing, you know. But ever try watching golf on TV? And then I always get confused. What hole are they at? What, and, and then, you know, then you have some kind of announcer like whispering it into the microphone um, or whatever. But golfers indeed dare to be themselves. Ty dared to be who he was. And I do, I'm sure that he was not perfect. All of us have many flaws. But there were certain realities that he held dear. Certain realities for which he was willing to sacrifice his very life if necessary and stand in the place of others. And whether consciously or unconsciously, that is indeed how we as people become servants of God. Interestingly enough, in our Christian faith, we believe that God sent Jesus into the world. And I think it's fair to say, although he wasn't a golfer, Jesus was a little different. He didn't come in the way that people expected him, uh, expected of the Son of God or the Messiah. They expected some great warrior figure. Jesus came in humility and simplicity. His power was the power of love. And love is manifested in many ways, including, when necessary, exhibiting tough love. I think that those in the law enforcement profession can certainly uh, appreciate that. And so as we gather today, I invite uh, any of you um, who might want to share a memory or two uh, of him, um, if, if, you, if you feel um, you are able to do that, um, please, if, if you want to, please feel free to do so. Yes, sir. Father, um, my name is Bob Slaughter, and I had the privilege of being with Ty on several of the FOP negotiations teams. And I want to tell you that Ty was the voice of reason. He always tried to reach out. He had a great concern and care for his fellow officers. And uh, um, I always remember just a high smile. There, there was something about it. It sparkled. It came from the heart. And uh, I, like so many of you, will miss him greatly. And my condolences to his family. Uh, and uh, you have so much to remember. So many good things. Thank you for allowing me to be we uh, worked with Ty for a long time. We worked with the control together. We uh, worked with the academy together. We worked with the special community together. 
stories. There's plenty of those that go around the Belt Five. One that came to mind was when I was working night shift, and I went into the locker room and saw this poor ram shoes sitting on the bench. Of course, he was at home asleep. So I took his shoes and I laced them from the back to the front. But, well, the next day, he made about said he saw a tie walk in full uniform across the grass at the side to carry his shoes to figure out the, the, the tie mechanism. Uh, there, there are a lot of stories like that. Ty was always a, a good natured guy, um, always wanted to laugh. Uh, he was my golf buddy, my youth partner, uh, my special duty partner many times, and, and uh, a great boss. Columbus Division of Police was um, as an instructor right at the academy. He served at the academy. That's another great vocation to share one's experience and knowledge with others and to enable them to respond to their call, that same vocation that he shared as a public servant. Memory and remembering are very important. 
And that's what we gather here today to do, to remember, to go forth, to remember um, those special moments that touched our hearts and um, your lives because of Ty's presence within them. As he now joins the community of saints in heaven, I'm sure that he takes many of those uh, qualities with him. Perhaps as a teacher, you know, he might uh, have a few words with St. Michael, the patron of police officers, and say, well, have you ever thought about doing it this way? Or uh, whatever. Or um, perhaps uh, he may have even uh, met, meet, meet, some pe meet some people that maybe he took into custody or had an encounter with or whatever. And because of God's love and mercy, we know that he is victorious over all sin, all suffering, and over the experience of death. And despite our sadness of having to say goodbye, we also honor him by how we conduct our lives, how we perform our duties, how we treat one another, and how we give it our best to be ourselves, to use the gifts that God has given us, just as Ty did in his life. In the police officer's prayer, we say, Lord, I ask for courage. Courage to face and conquer my own fears. Courage to take me where others will not go. I ask for strength, strength of body to protect others and strength of spirit to lead others. I ask for the dedication, for dedication, indeed dedicate, to be dedicated to my job. Give me, Lord, concern for others who trust me and compassion for those who need me. And praise the Lord through it all. Be at my side so that I will be safe and the community will be safe. Before we go our separate ways and take leave of our brother, may our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope, for one day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto Ty, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Ty in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in his life, for they are signs of your goodness and of our communion with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. The sun shine warmly upon your face. The rain fall gently upon your fields. Until we meet again, may our Lord hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Let us go in peace. Amen.